blurring can create some very neat special effects. I'm going to add an effect to make the plane that's shooting through this image during the Blue Angel flight over San Francisco much more prominent and remove the distracting objects below. Now, with Photoshop CC, your blur effects under Filter Blur and the high-end Field Blur, Iris Blur, and Tilt Shift can be run as smart objects. Thank you, Adobe. I have really wanted to edit these settings in the past, but once you applied them, they were permanent. If I choose Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, OK, I know it's going to be a smart object, so I'll hit Don't Show Again. I'll name this Blue Angel. And I'll choose Filter, Blur, and Iris Blur. Iris Blur is a radial blur from any given spot. So if I pull the center directly onto this plane, I can adjust it and make it oval or circular again. I can pull the blur further away from the plane or closer to the plane so it's the sharpest object. You move it from the center, and if it's a bit more oval, and I move this down, you'll see how that light pole is coming into focus. If I grab this little square that's kind of turned sideways, I can go to more of a rounded rectangle instead of an oval. But I want oval or perfectly circular. And this little lighter gray over the darker gray actually lets you control your blur amount. Really extreme. I want to see a little detail, but let's go too far because we can. When I click OK, it's running the blur, and this all happens on canvas. It used to be a dialogue years ago, but I do want to see this trail from the plane. So I can fully edit it because I made it a smart filter. So I'll double click on Blur Gallery. I'll make this much more oval, scoot it over, and now I may want it to not blur this at all. So a power user trick is I can hold down Option or Alt to pull the blur completely away from the end. That lets me move one blur point. Option or Alt would let me pull these closer. And if I want to back down the blur settings, I could dial it down here or over here. We'll also go up or down. But I think I'm happy with that, so I'll click OK. And let's try a different type of blur. On this image, I want to do what's called a field blur. And in a field blur, it looks like everything's getting blurry initially. But when I choose Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, I do that before ever running anything under the Filter menu. I'll name this Cable Car. And I'll choose Filter, Blur, Field Blur. Now, Field Blur allows you to set multiple blur points. So let's start by doing a blur up to the right where these lights are. But I want to keep the street and maybe the cable car in focus. So if I add a second blur point, all of the blur tools let you do that, I can back blur down to zero. I find setting it to zero over here easier than using the little circle because in the little circle, you can accidentally go past zero too quickly and get a really interesting effect. So I'll just slide it back down to zero. But I can continue adding blur points. So multiple blur points are very possible and very easy to set with field blur. And I want to make the cable car also a focal point. And it's not only blurring, but it's doing a gradient, a blend, from where this is blurring at 38 to where this one is blurring at 23. So maybe I want to make them all 38 or 39. If they were different values, it's blending from the lighter blur at 13 to the bigger blur at 38. So you could choose ranges of blurring that happen in different spots. 
and this should go pretty far. I want really no detail there. But I want the cable car in focus. So I'll click the cable car, and I will slide the blur to zero. And it's blending from these severe blur points to wherever the center of that is. That's one of the benefits. Now, the other very cool thing I should show is bokeh. Some people call it bokeh, but the proper pronunciation is bow, like bow tie, and ka, like kettle, ke, bokeh. <laughs> I have to say that out loud to get my pronunciation correct. All right, so maybe I want to keep a little bit more of the street in focus. I'll add another blur point, set that to zero, and it produces a really interesting effect. And I'm going to move these over because I want that truck to really be non-existent or blur out so I could do a more extreme blur. But you can play on your own, and I'll show you what bokeh does, bokeh. Really, it should be said as two words. So when I look at this, I can take the light bokeh, hard right, and watch what happens to all of those lights. It's like twinkling stars. And to go a little bit further with it, I can apply a color. So you can experiment with the amount of light bokeh and the amount of color and your blur settings. I think I like slight colors in this. And this area shouldn't be in focus at all, so I'll add one more point, but I can go nuts. So here we have a much more interesting image using focus here, keeping the original detail to call attention to the cable car and using field blur in multiple spots to blur out the uninteresting background parts. So I will click OK, and it will apply the blur. And you could try on your own the last shot of these glasses, but notice that the camera already had some depth of field, meaning the foreground is in focus, the background is blurry. If you do filter, blur, might as well do it, I'm here, iris blur, I could make the glasses the focal point and make this a much wider circle and adjust to create more depth of field using no keys to pull these out to the edge of the glasses or an individual point like this one with Option or Alt to pull in. And if I click OK, it's been applied, but be forewarned, I went so quickly through this that it's permanent. So I'm going to undo and make sure I do filter, convert for smart filters, name this glasses, and now run filter, blur, iris blur. Tilt shift is for special effects. They really say it simulates a toy camera look and can create miniatures. You really need an outdoor scene of a cityscape, and it's something you can experiment with, but play on your own with filter, blur, Field Blur, Iris Blur, and Tilt Shift for a special effect that is miniature or toy camera look. But here is my before and after.